friends welcome to credit science weekly current affairs so in this video we are going to discuss about the karnataka current events which happened in the third week of july month so moving on to the first topic the national institution ranking framework recently ministry of education has released nirf which means national institutional ranking framework under this framework various institutions from the karnataka have taken among the top 10 positions so nearly 11 education institutions which are from karnataka have been featured in the top 10 position this nirf will be released by the ministry of educations majorly for the higher education institutions it is the ranking of higher education institutions on various performance on that they have devised into various categories around 11 categories have been devised and they will accord the ranking on all these categories before discussing on those details first we'll look into the what are the education institutions from karnataka featured in top 10 so it is the indian institute of science which has been considered as the second most institution with regard to the ranking in the overall category so it was assumed second position the first in the overall category is the iit madras followed by it is indian institute of science in it assumes first position in terms of research when it comes to research indian institute of science has assumed first position among the higher education institutions when it comes to the business or the management it is the i am bangalore which assumes the second position when it comes to the law it is national law school in bangalore which assumes the first position so moving on this aspect with regard to the engineering among the engineering the suratkal regional engineering college or what we call it as national institute of technology nit has assumed 10th position among all the states so with regard to medical it is nimans uh, as, and kmc kasturba medical college has assumed fourth and seventh positions respectively so these are the various institutions which have assumed the uh, position within the top 10 if you look at the history of this since 2015 since 2015 nirf in ranking framework has been publishing by the government of india through the ministry of education <clears throat> under this there we are 11 categories under which the nirf ranking will be provided so these are the overall category the engineering medical management universities pharmacy law dental then the architectural then the architectural and the colleges general colleges so these are the various categories under which the ranking will be provided so this is the seventh edition so this you need to remember the position of the various institutions which have been ranked among the top 10 so in the objective type of question paper in the prelims or in any other competitive exams especially with related to the karnataka current events they may ask what are the position of the institutions with regard to the nir okay moving on to the next aspect <coughs> canada language comprehensive development bill what is this the government has set up a committee under the chairmanship of sr bannur mat to look into the canada language issue that committee has brought out a bill emphasis emphasizing or giving legislation to properly implement Kannada language in the various government working bodies and also in overall in Karnataka how the Kannada language need to be imposed and uh, need to be legalized so various governments successive governments have been in favor of bringing Kannada or encouraging Kannada in the various departments including the government sector as well as the private sector and other education institutions also but this emphasis was lacking the legal backing so there was no legal legislation for not adhering to the guidelines issued by the government so in order to give legalized framework to this language the government has set up a committee and submitted a report draft report or draft bill to the government so what it talks about what are the features of this bill so one first most important feature of this bill is it wants to establish the enforcement directorate this enforcement directorate will look into the how the legislation will be implemented in the various corners of the state if there is lacuna if they don't adhere to the guidelines then it will have authority to impose the penalties or bring in stricter actions 
so it will be have a state enforcement directorate regional district taluk and the local enforcement directorate like this there it has been structured then all bills and the ordinances which are passed in the legislature should be necessarily be in kannada then kannada should be compulsory in various brochures that the uh, government programs various brochures printed in the karnataka programs and the banners of the government we should compulsory compulsorily have the kannada language then the teaching of kannada language the teaching of kannada language in the technical fields various technical fields now there is no teaching of kannada language in the technical fields in the proper legalized framework so you need to bring in teaching of the kannada language in the technical field where the students have not read kannada in the 10th or in the pc for those students you need to carry out the teaching of kannada in the technical fields like engineering medicine pharmacy and so on it also emphasized on carrying out the workshops in various industries various other establishments which employs people more than 100 to compulsorily conduct the workshops wherein the kannada population people will help in teaching to the non kannada people so that they can learn the kannada language easily in order to focus on this the that organization has to carry out the workshops and it also prescribes penalties if any organization individual or any entity for that matter if he does not adhere to the guidelines prescribed by this act for the first time they are supposed to have a penalty of 5000 for the second time they have 10000 and for the third time they have the 20000 and thereafter the license will be cancelled for that particular entity or organization and they will keep on increasing the tough regulations for that particular entity so these are the various details that the draft bill has in it so we need to see how the government responds and how it brings into the act so moving on to the next aspect it is with regard to the monkey pox so why it is in news as all of you know one of the major disease that the country is now facing is the monkey pox in karnataka why it is in focus because in india the first monkey pox case was detected in kerala since it is a neighbor and we have a very close relations means in terms of movement of peoples and other goods with kerala so in karnataka has sounded alert to have a continuous vigil and monitor this monkey pox so what is this monkey pox monkey pox is a viral zoonotic disease which transmits from animal to human beings and it belongs to a orthopoxivirus family and this is how the virus belongs so this disease was discovered in the year 1948 where some mo <coughs> some monkeys have been kept in for research in the in those monkeys this disease was first identified in the colonies means in the group of monkeys which have been kept for the research in those monkeys the monkey pox was first time detected it was detected in the monkeys hence the name is called as monkey pox so what are the symptoms associated with the monkey pox so you can see the various rashes on the skin so these are the first sign of the monkey pox it looks very similar to the chicken pox which has been eliminated from the globe <coughs> it looks similar to that but the uh, rashes become wider as it proceeds and the fever and headache and body pain is more severe in the monkey pox compared to the chicken pox so <coughs> these are the symptoms in which the monkey pox will come so one is the rashes on the skin the fever headache and the body pain is very severe among the monkey pox patients so how we transmits it transmits from infected person to the other person through close contact that is body fluids the blood contact or even the close contact for a longer period of time or through sexual transmission so these are the modes through which the disease transmits from one person to the other person then <clears throat> earlier it was endemic to the africa now it has been spreading towards the various countries that that's why it has become panic even the world health organization has been declared right it is an uh, concern for uh, world health it's a uh, uh, concern for the world health so now it has not been declared as pandemic it is uh, health concern for the public this is the uh, uh, guideline which the who has been designated the monkey pox so it is now endemic to the africa and the the virus which is endemic to africa 
has been divided into two. One is Central African and the Western African. The Central African is also called Congo-based virus, Congo-based virus, and this disease is this virus is more disease transmittable and it is causing more more impact on the human beings whereas the western african the virus uh, monkeypox is not so much severe it is not of great concern because it not it is not causing great impact on the health of the human beings whereas the central uh, or the congo based virus is of great concern so this is the overall uh, understanding about the monkeypox and there is no specific treatment for the monkeypox. All the symptomatic treatment is given to the monkeypox. So it needs what we call it as the normal incubation period that is uh, the 14, 21 days. Uh, the person should need to be quarantined and he will need to give the symptomatic treatment to come down the fever need to come down the fever and other uh, body related issues. Then he can recover. As of now, the, the even with regard to the government of India and also World Health Organization, there is no much panic because it is recoverable. Where the patients have gone for monkeypox can be recovered. But uh, recently, there is a first death with regard to the monkeypox happened in India. So these are the various things which you need to know about with regard to monkeypox. Moving on to the next aspect, it is regard to the textile parks in Karnataka. So recently uh, the Chief Minister of Karnataka has inaugurated the textile park in Kursapur village in Shiggam Taluk. So first textile park he has in according to the announcement he has done in the budget the Chief Minister has inaugurated the functioning of Kursapur means laid down the stone for the textile park in Kursapur village in Shiggam and the government has announced that the textile parks will be, be opened in all the taluks of Karnataka because it acts as an employment generation mechanism where it cre creates huge employment activity and it also helps in development, infrastructural development of that particular area so that the overall development of that taluk can also be enhanced, increases the employment creation, it prevents the migration. When there is employment creation, people will start working there so that it will curb the migration and also it helps in improving the standard of living of the people and also helps in export promotion of the textile goods. So with these benefits, the government is focusing on establishing of various textile parks in the various taluks of the Karnataka. So this is with regard to the textile parks. Moving on to the next aspect, it is the 5G trial. Recently, MG Road Metro Station has been chosen for the first trial which has been carried out by the first station in the country to conduct the trials, the 5G trials for the TRI, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. The next generation is the 5G generation. As all we know, we are in the 4G now. So next generation is the fifth generation technology where we have enhanced latent speed, we have the greater bandwidth. So it will have a greater speed of transmission of data and it will help in addressing the next industrial revolution which majorly focuses on the techniques such as the advanced learning, the machine learning, IoT, okay, cloud computing. All these technologies can be enhanced only with use of 5G technology. So this 5G technology will help us in boosting all this technology and also the metaverse which we are talking about. All this new field of technology will be facilitated only with the 5G. So for the 5G trial it has been a carried out in the MG road metro station. So this is the first station in the country to conduct the trials. Moving on to the next aspect, it is related to the innovation index. India's innovation index is released by the Niti Aayog. It will be released by Niti Aayog. It is a third edition it is releasing on. So Karnataka tops the list. Among the major category list, Karnataka state has stopped in the India. The reasons it cited was attraction of the FDI and large number of venture capitalists are the major reason for which topped the innovation index. Apart from this, there are various innovations or various supportive environment that the government has created for the various entrepreneurs and the startups and other MSME sectors. Karnataka has been emerged as the top state in terms of innovation index. This innovation index will be assessed or measured based on the various parameters that is called a seven pillar approach where it focuses on human capital, investment, knowledge workers, business environment, safety and legal environment, knowledge output and knowledge diffusion. So these are the parameters that the 
Niti Aayog takes into consideration for assessing the innovations of each states. Based on this, it will give the ranking. So, Karnataka tops the innovation index. Moving on to the next aspect, it is with regard to the Brain Health Clinic. The Karnataka government has initiated what we call it as Brain Health Clinic. It is the first kind of clinic which has been established in India itself. In India, it is the first brain health clinic to be established. It was inaugurated at General Hospital Jainagar. It was attended by the Ministry of Health and the ambassador for the brain health clinic, it is Robin Uttapa, ambassador for it. So what is unique about this? It is a part of Karnataka Brain Health Initiative and it is uh, ca it is being carrying out in association with the Nimans. So you can see that in the previous videos of our current affairs, we already discussed about the brain health clinic. In the month of March, I think so, or March uh, or February, there is a proposal for establishment of a brain health clinic. So it has been inaugurated now. It majorly focuses to diagnose, treat and refer and follow up of with respect to the neurological disorders. If they have been diagnosed at the earlier stages, then there is a good uh, chances of recovering of patients without having a great damage to the neurological problems. So in order to diagnose, coordinate and uh, treat the patient, it focuses majorly on the brain health aspects. So Nimans has trained various doctors to coordinate with this effort so that they can better diagnose and treat the patients suffering from the neurological disorders. So two more uh, clinics will be opening with regard to the brain health clinic, one at Kolar and other at the Chikbala. While inaugurating this clinic, a event was organized where it was named as Reflections with Robin. So where uh, Robin Uttapa has talked about what are the difficulties he has faced as a child with regard to the brain health related problems. So and also a cricket match was also been held in association with the various doctors and the clinical staff involved in the uh, neurological problems. The brain health for all was the theme of this year's World Brain Day. Okay. So moving on to the next is Sannatti. Sannatti and Kanaganahalli. So as all we know, it is one of the important places which has been excavated by the Karnataka Archaeological and also the ASI, Archaeological Survey of India. It is situated in Gulbarga district where we found out the remains of remains of Ashokan Empire. Ashokan Empire. So why it is in news? Because Archaeological Survey of India has decided to take over the site and excavate all the remaining objects which are lying in the ground to reconstruct two past or other historical structures in its own manner. So in its historical manner, they want to reconstruct it. For that, the ASI has taken over. So looking at the history of this Sanatti and Kanaganahalli, as all we know that in 1986, when there was heavy rain, this Sanatti and Kanaganahalli comes on the bank of river Bhima, okay, where earlier it to have what we call it as the Devi temple. So in 1986, there was heavy downpour and the structure was damaged. In order to protect that structure, the people and with the support of the government started to build that. There they found out the remains of this site. So then they started excavating. They found that they are the remains of the Mauryan times. So it gave various details to us. Various structures were there in that place. It has Mahastupa and it was also referred to as Adhaloka Mahachaitya means the great stupa for the nether world means the, the other world. It has various viharas, it has chaityas and also we have the image of Ashoka. The stone image of Ashoka with his queens and other helpers has been there. So it is considered as the only uh, image of Ashoka which has been existing now is being found at the Sanatti or Kananganahalli. It has an inscription called as Raya Asoka in Brahmi script. So this question has already asked in the UPSC prelims. Uh, historical significance. This site belongs to Mauryan's time. It also belongs to the Mauryan time. Early Satavahanas and later Satavahanas. All these kings have contributed for the development of this region. So which the earlier the villagers which have considered that site as an abundant well that supposed to be a Mahastupa. Apart from that, there are various structures which have been there in that site, such as it may be various slabs, dharma chakras, chaityas, viharas, various stone sculptures, stone slabs have been now been 
found at this site. So this archaeological survey of India has decided to take over this site and it wants to develop it into a museum. And also some of the elected representatives are requesting the government to give the list uh, to demarcate or to make this sunnet into a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So still that government has not taken but as of now ASI has taken over to excavate and preserve and protect this site. Moving on to the next aspect it is regard to the Namma clinics. So as proposed in the budget the government of Karnataka has said that uh, August all the wards in the BBMP will have the Namma clinics. So Namma clinics are those clinics which are established to provide affordable health services where the people are treated for the preliminary diseases majorly contagious diseases. So the preliminary diagnosis and treatment has the important hallmark in pre prevention of the contagious disease. Say for instance the, re the COVID or any other infectious the viral fevers. If it is not addressed at the very initial stages it may become what we call it as threat to the life of a person. So in order to address this, these Namma clinics have been established and the whole intention is to provide the affordable health services and which major focus on the contagious diseases. With this the treatment or the diagnosis is done at the local level at the very initial stage and it will prevent the huge load or what working load for the higher hospitals so that this problem can be addressed at the local level itself. So these are the various issues which have happened in the third week of July. I hope you enjoy watching this video. Thanks for watching this video.